All right, guys, this is gonna be a very, very quick guide on how to lose maximum amount of fat possible in a short space of time, such as a month. So this is for anyone who's overdone it with the bulk or has got a holiday booked in the next month or so and needs to get really shredded very, very quickly. Here's a no bullshit guide on how to do so in very little time. I have uh, want to cut at the moment and I'm getting pretty lean. I had a holiday recently where I went to Dubai and, you know, I kind of had three or four weeks to prepare and managed to get this lean beforehand. So I think I've got a good guide I can share with you exactly what I've did. I've done this plenty of times now and um, it's a lot easier than you think. So to begin, it all starts with the calorie deficit. Let me move my head out of here. So what we want to do is whether we're on a bulk or on maintenance, we go straight into a calorie deficit, no messing about. So we go straight into a 500 calorie deficit. That's kind of the maximum you want to be working with. No messing about. We find out what maintenance calories are using TDE calculator. I've talked about this plenty of times, but you know, go to that website, find out what you need to maintain your current weight and then drop it by 500. Now you're in a calorie deficit and you are doing so by 500 calories every day. It's 3,500 in a week and therefore you will lose a certain amount of fat per week. Now, over the four weeks, you kind of want to gradually decrease the deficit. So increase the deficit and basically decrease how many calories you're eating and go as low as a 750 calorie deficit. So slowly increase the deficit by maybe 50 calories or so every single week. Hmm. Don't go under 750 though, because one, you will find it very, very difficult. You will lose the will to live. And two, it can actually have a reverse effect. You might see that your metabolism slows down and you store fat as a result. It's not the right move. So 500 to 750 is kind of the lowest I'd recommend. Don't go under it. The next thing we want to do is keep our protein high. This is really, really crucial. It doesn't really matter what you do with the carbs and fat when in a deficit. The protein matters. It matters about calories and protein. Now, the reason why is because you need protein to restore your muscle, to maintain it, and to even grow if your training is intense enough. Now, if you can nail that and your protein and your training is right, you will maintain slash grow muscle. However, the deficit will mean you lose weight. Therefore, if you are maintaining muscle and you are losing weight, you are only losing fat. Do you see what I mean? That's kind of the key point I want to make here. If you were to kind of ignore the protein side of things, ignore the training, you would lose muscle alongside the weight. And as a result, you would just arrive at a kind of skinny physique, which is not what we want. We don't just want to be skinny. We want to get rid of only fat and keep all the muscle that we put on. <clears throat> so assuming, you know, a 2,000 to 2,500 calorie deficit, which is kind of what most people are going to be working with, unless there's an ex extremities, you know, that's kind of going to be a normal calorie range. You want to be organizing your macros like this. So I always say around 2 to 2.2 grams per kg of body weight. That's kind of like 1.5 per pound, but let's do it in kgs to make it easy if you need to convert it. And then with that, you know, your fats are going to be somewhere in this range, 40 to 60 grams. You could go keto if you want, but what I recommend is just keep it around this range and then leave the carbs as a remainder. Like I said, it doesn't matter what you do. You can have all carbs, zero fat. You can have zero fat, all carbs. It doesn't matter. However, what you do want to do is kind of make sure that you have a good balance of everything for energy. So I'd recommend keeping some carbs just for energy. It's really good to have just before your workout. Um, and this is something I actually just found earlier. It's on my, um, my spreadsheets, kind of a little meal plan I could give you. Now, this isn't for a deficit, but I thought I'd put it in the images take it with what you want, change the volumes, but that's kind of a good day of eating. Um, maybe just reduce the volume to kind of tailor to your deficit, but still that if you want, pretty useful. Now, one thing I want to explain with our calorie deficit is it's not as simple as that. You do want to make sure that the foods you're eating are quality. Don't get me wrong. If you were to eat 2000 calories of cake, you would still lose fat if that's you know less than your maintenance calories. However, you would be very bloated at times and you wouldn't look as aesthetic as you want to be. Therefore, it's really important that we kind of ignore, you know, all processed food. We eat really clean, organic foods, stuff that's natural, it's gonna make you feel good. Again, cheat meals, no kind of trans fats that we want. We don't want any of that. We want everything healthy, regulated, something that's gonna help us with our physique. Boost your testosterone as well, which is gonna even expedite the process. And again, alcohol. Alcohol is just gonna fucking destroy progress especially when we've got you know a time frame like four weeks you want to be avoiding all of these for the fastest growth if you can do that if you get the calorie deficit right and you get these macros put in so go onto my fitness power and go on the goals section and actually fill these in using your calories using that 
steal this meal plan if you want and then make sure that you're not eating processed food having cheat meals or any alcohol you're sorted in terms of the diet so then it comes on to a few more things so if we go to the right do, 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 cardio now we want to use cardio to further increase our deficit and fix any kind of fuck ups. So there's going to be days where you may, might overeat. You know, if you've got a big appetite, you might find it hard to eat a reduced amount of calories. That's where we use cardio just to make sure that we're always in that deficit. So what I recommend is at least two days of cardio per week. It can be whatever you want. I like to run just because I enjoy running. I don't enjoy going on the stairs for fucking 45 minutes. I have no idea why anyone does it. If they enjoy it, good for them. I like to run and burn around 500 calories or so. So that's kind of what I'd recommend. It looks to burn 500 calories per session. Do it as you wish. Um, it's just there to kind of fix any fuck ups. It also boosts your metabolism and does help with fat loss. For example, if you're doing high intensity workouts, your heart rate is going to be so high. And as a result, you are going to be burning more calories. It's really good. I love to do it faster in the morning sometimes. There's an argument that it burns more fat. There are studies to prove that that is not the case. However, my logic is if you are fasted, you haven't eaten anything, then you must be using fat as energy. That's my logic. Works for me. So give it a go. You feel good after as well, especially when you haven't eaten and you go for a run. It's quite nice. So when it comes to daily steps, right, this is completely separate from cardio. Your daily steps factor into your maintenance calories because they assume you are active in a day and you are burning X amount of calories. Therefore, you need to be doing that to kind of be burning a basic level of calories per day. That needs to be done alongside cardio. You can't use cardio as your steps if that makes sense it doesn't matter too much but just make the habit of getting eight thousand plus steps every single day it's very good practice and you know that's what's going to contribute to maximum fat loss so that's kind of cardio deficit sorted now it comes to training so let me move it your goal is to train heavy as possible as heavy as fuck not more reps so the goal of the training right is to gain as much muscle as possible, to maintain our muscle, not burn calories. The calories are sorted by the deficit and the cardio. We don't need to worry about that. So don't be doing 12 to 15 reps because it burns more calories. Be worried about putting as much weight on the bar as possible with the correct form and gaining as much muscle as possible. So your goal is to train heavy as possible in the six to eight rep range because that's what we're going to be doing for kind of hypertrophy. Do not let your intensity drop. So maybe you want to bulk before and drop the calories keep going with the same intensity if anything train harder so do whatever you need to do maybe that's a big meal beforehand carb loading pre-workout good music whatever it needs to be done just make sure that you are training really hard and gaining and maintaining that muscle like i said if you are doing that and you're in a calorie deficit which means you lose x amount of weight per week it means that weight is only fat so that's really important and if you want that extra energy you want that boost use creatine and carbs that's why i don't really believe in ketosis you know eliminating all carbs i think you need a certain amount of carbs for the glycogen that is used to kind of pump that extra extra reps out and obviously get you stronger so kind of use those carbs just before your workout have a little spike in your carbs before to get that glycogen going and also use creatine to kind of improve you know the amount of atp you're getting more energy all of that that's what you want to do with training so now we've got training down we've got deficit down we've got cardio down that's your kind of basics, right? If you can get all of that, you're going to be losing a lot of fat very, very quickly. Now, there's a few extras we want to talk about here. So, da -da -da, sleep and recovery. Now, I'm going to look at it from a kind of negative perspective. So, let's say we don't get much sleep. Let's say we don't get eight hours of sleep. If you get five to six hours of sleep every single night, your testosterone is going to drop and you're going to find it harder to lose fat and pack on muscle. So, that's for one. Two, you're not going to grow or maintain much muscle because you're not getting enough time to recover. And as a result, you're just going to get skinnier and you're not really going to be in a position where you're looking more muscular. So you want to be getting that eight hours of sleep. It's really, really important. Your testosterone will increase if you're getting eight hours of sleep per night. And as a result, it becomes really easy to kind of convert fat into muscle. But there's a study that shows this. So really focus on your sleep. It's a must. You'll also find it harder to train in the gym if you're on low sleep you won't be able to push as much so it's really really important to understand that the next is not to force your sessions you know don't be trying to fit in six to seven you know six sessions per week in the gym because you need to train the muscle twice per week don't be doing that because 
you're on a deficit, right? You're on low calories. You're better off just training harder and recovering. This is the fastest way to maintain and grow muscle as opposed to kind of overtraining. You don't want to be doing that because you haven't got enough calories in to actually grow the muscle and recover. Therefore, you need to be focusing on time off to recover and do doing that by sleep. So a really good way of doing it is just focusing on two days on, one day off. It's what I do and it works really, really well. So we train Monday and Tuesday, take Wednesday off. Then we go Thursday and Friday, take Saturday off. Then we go Sunday, Monday, the Tuesday off, etc., etc. That means the maximum we're training per week is five. And that's kind of what I recommend. I think if you're training six days per week, it's not quality, in my opinion. That's my logic. But that's your sleep and recovery. If you can get that down, that's the next piece of the puzzle. Now, pro hacks. There's some more tips here I want to show you. Now, those are what you kind of need. Those are your basics. If you can get all of them right, you're absolutely sorted. But there's some tricks to make that a little bit easier. What I always recommend is delaying your first meal. So your first meal, have it around 12 or 1 p.m. Have some coffee in the morning. Use caffeine to suppress your appetite because what will happen is you're allowed to then spread your calories from the hours of 12 until around 10 p.m. And therefore, you're never at a point where you're hungry in the evening because there's nothing worse than having all your calories at like 6 p.m. And then you still feel hungry, but you can't eat because you've hit your calories. That's where late night cravings come from you know, lack of preparation. So instead, use the time in the morning where we don't actually want to eat as much and where it's suitable for us to have quite a lot of caffeine to our advantage. So have a lot of caffeine, smash out some work. Once you finish the work, have a big meal at 12 o'clock. Then have another one at three, have another one at six, have another one at nine, and therefore you will go the whole day without feeling hungry. It's the best way to do it because obviously caffeine suppresses your appetite. You don't want to be having it after 12 for good sleep as well. And because you're having all your caffeine before 12, and you're doing it on a fasted state, it's gonna hit you more, your work's gonna be more productive, and it's also so much better to work on an empty stomach because you're not digesting, you're not sluggish, you feel really good. So that's a really good tip, intermittent fasting. It's a bit of a buzzword at the moment, it just means delaying your first meal. I don't care, you can have your last meal at fucking midnight if you want, but just delay your first meal. So the next one, clean diet, no processed food, everything organic and everything natural. We want you know, minor ingredients, we've all seen um, Eddie Abdu, what's his name, yeah, good lad. No processed food, just because there's loads of shit in it that's going to cause, you know, bloating, I guess. You're not going to keep fat, right? But you're just not going to look great. You're not going to feel great. So try and keep everything organic because we've got a short time frame to lose this, right? Caffeine suppress your appetite. And there is one more I want to talk about here. And I would be careful. This is for the advanced trainers. If you're a beginner, don't be doing this. But you can be taking your himbine, which is this supplement right here, which I take. And it is just a really good supplement, natural supplement, by the way, that essentially just kind of acts as a bit of a thermogenic. So basically just increases your body temperature and just burns extra calories. I feel like it's quite good for burning stubborn areas of fat. They bind to kind of alpha receptors, which are essentially the stubborn areas of fat on your body. It's really good to use on the back end of a long cut. So maybe... If you're in a four-week short period, use the Yehimbine to your advantage. But I would watch some videos and research it because there are some side effects. For example, an increased heart rate. It's not for someone who's never done a cut before. It's for someone who's you know takes their training really seriously and wants to get as lean as possible. So take that with a pinch of salt. But that's there for you. I do recommend your Yehimbine. I fucking love it. And honestly, that's my approach to just getting shredded in four weeks. You, you can do it like that. You can do it very, very quickly. It's the best way to do it. There is no better guide, to be honest with you. If you can just follow those tips, I think you'll be absolutely fine. So for anyone who's got that holiday and only has a four-week window to get as shredded as possible, this video is for you. Use this to your advantage and um, let me know how everything goes. But yeah, that's today's video done and um, we'll speak with you tomorrow. Cheers, fellas.